Hi guys, this is Fluke and today we're going to look at how to troubleshoot our network connection. So this would be one of those scenarios where, you know, one moment I've got internet, next moment my internet's gone or, you know, last night I turned off my machine, everything was working fine and this morning I've got no internet. So this is just some basic steps to start troubleshooting that should help you find the, the solution on, on where the problem is coming from. So first thing first is Windows updates. Windows updates, they update new drivers regularly and I found sometimes they just remove your adapter. So we need to check that the adapter is actually there and present. So to do that, we're going to go to the control panel. In the search dialog, you're going to type in network. We'll see network and sharing center. And on your left hand side, change adapter settings. So this is not the only way to get into the uh, network connections. There's other ways as well. This way is just the most common way as it's still being used by older versions of Windows as well. So there you can see Ethernet adapter. It's an Intel Pro 1000, etc, etc. So first thing is checked, it is there. Next thing, is it active? You can see it is active. I can uh, disable it. Obviously it will turn off grey there. Had a little bit of a blonde moment there where um, I forgot I was remoting into the machine. But yeah, and there we can see it is back, it's nice and blue. If this has a big red X on it, obviously it's not plugged in. Um, it does sometimes happen that your router is off or you know somebody cleaned and accidentally unplugged it sometimes it's actually just broken you know that's also a possibility try changing the cable with another cable um restarting your router something like that but if this is active like this this is already a good sign next thing is to check your ip address now i'm going to go two ways of checking your ip address you can right click it go to properties you're going to see there many stuff in this list here you don't worry about most much of them and just like from my side, I disable IPv6. It's not something I regularly use at this stage. Um, we're looking at IPv4. I'm going to double click that. Obtain IP automatically. Obtain DNS server automatically. That is if your server is set up to or your router is set up to give you IP. That's perfect. Click OK. Click OK. Let's just do this again. And we're going to go to status. From status, we're going to click on details. And there you can see the IP address of this machine now the ip address should look something like a 192.168 or 10.10 .10, uh, or 10.0 something like that if it's 196 dot whatever you're not getting an ip address it's it's called a, a pippa ip address i don't even know pronouncing that right um but what that basically means is it's it's taking a random ip address out of an allocated set that microsoft set out there that will hopefully if you don't have a DHCP or some type of structure on your network, allow you to still talk with other machines. We want to see there is an actual IP address. From here, we're not too much worried about the subnet, your IT guy will know what that is, but we're worried about your gateway. There you can see gateway 102.168.1 showing I've got a router that is um, the DHCP and the gateway for that. So the DHCP just means it's giving me my machine the IP address it needs to use and then the DNS just says that that when you go and search for an internet page it will find where this page is okay so that's that's the one way of finding your IPs the next way is if you go to command prompt what you can do is press the Windows X so some people might have your PowerShell some people might have uh, command prompt I've still got command prompt there's a little bit older version of, of Windows 10 so they didn't update it yet to win um, to use PowerShell but I mean you can change it the way you want there's options to do that once you're in there you're gonna get a little black screen on that black screen you can type in IP config all one word space forward slash all enter this is gonna give you quite a bit of more information you don't need all of it I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger and then we're going to look at the Ethernet adapter. Um, depending on what you're on, if you're on a wireless, it will just say wireless. Um, similar thing, you're going to see there, you're going to see 
uh, the make of the adapter, the MAC address or the physical address, um, and then the IPv4 address. There you can see that's the same IP address as that we've got over here. So let's just uh, get them next to each other. There we go. Same IP address. Default gateway 102.168.1. DHCP server is the gateway. It gives me the IP address and it will look at where the address is, is how to find the web page. So this is already a good sign for me. Obviously, I am logged into remote desktop, so I know everything's working. But from your side, if you've got something similar, so not the 169 IP address, um, it must be something like a 10.0 or 192. There's these various options. Um, then you're already uh, one step closer to you know finding where the issue is. Next thing is we want to see. Can we see the actual gateway? Can we actually ping the gateway? So we're going to type in ping and the IP address of the gateway. Enter. And then you can see, I can see a reply. What that means is I can see the actual gateway. So it means that that device is on and working and everything like that. Okay. Similarly, if the device wasn't on, let's do a, the following one, let's do two. As you can see, destination host, service. if you would see something like that, it means your gateway is off, your router is off. You can't get through to the device that actually breaks out to the internet. So you're looking for something like this, then you know your router is at least working. This, your router is off, probably going to troubleshoot your router rather than troubleshooting your machine. Okay. Next thing is we want to ping the internet. So the easiest way is to ping something like Google. As you can see, Google comes back with an IP address. So this is what I did here now basically tells me my DNS is working. So my domain names. Um, Wow, domain name solution. Um, it tells me that it's already working um, because I was able to pick up uh, Google and the IP address closest to where I am. Now this doesn't always work and, and just because it doesn't always resolve doesn't mean that your internet isn't working. It just could mean that the DNS section isn't working. So another way to test this is to ping something like well, the ping and Google has got its own DNS, so something like 8.8.8.8. .8 that is the Google one of Google's DNSs, and as you can see, it will ping it. Um, bit of a lag there. So, what this means is the internet is working without testing the DNS section of your network, so the domain name uh, uh, solutions. Um, then, if, if for instance, you don't get a reply on, on here, um, but you do get a reply on your gateway, there's other ways of a little bit more advanced troubleshooting. So, how am I getting to Google, for instance? There's a way that you can say, uh, trace route, www.google.co.za, enter, and what you can see now, is it will actually do a ping to each device in between where you are and the service you're pinging in this in this section it is actually Google so you can see there it's pinging my home router then it's jumping to the next device which is not allowing me to ping or see anything of it which it's it's common you can see it quite a lot and there you can see I'm breaking out via telcom with a telcom IP address this is probably a uh, IP address that changes every eight hours, something like that, as it's over a wireless that's connecting. It's not a fixed light. Um, so that will also give you some type of indication, especially when you start seeing request timed out the whole time, is where it is breaking. Um, you will basically, if it gets to this point, you will have to go to your ISP and get, tell them, look, this is the problem I'm having. But don't go to them and tell them the website isn't working, the website doesn't actually exist. You know, go to them and test it from another machine first, you know, all those kind of stuff. If you're not sure, get your IT guy out there. If you're the IT guy, you probably know where to go already. Okay, then one last thing similar to 
the traceries. I'm just going to end that one. I'm going to go path ping. And there you can see it'll bring up a list of every IP in between you and the device you're pinging. Let's give it about 25 seconds. So I'll just uh, I'll just um, forward this up a bit. And there you can see it um it brings some information for you. So instead of going to ping your device and then the next device and then the next device, it will ping certain stuff for you and give you that statistic. So as you can see on my network, I've got zero loss out of the 100% packet sent. Um, just gives me a bit more information on prior to getting to the internet. This is especially useful when you're sitting on a remote branch VPNing through a, uh, um, a few firewalls to break out to the internet. This gives you a lot of information um, or a lot more information that we're currently seeing on there. That will help you quite a bit to troubleshoot some network issues. So yeah, if you guys liked what I did here and this was helpful, you know, please share it. Um, invite people to come and have a look at it. If you've got questions, something I can help you with, send me a link, send me a mail, you know, comment. I'll always see what I can help you with. And again, if if I said something wrong, I know sometimes my, my words slip. Just comment in there. Let's let's fix it up. I'll always try and fix it up on the next one. But if you like it, you know, press that button, subscribe. Ring the little bell and yeah, see you next time.